about Harrison? Harrison, do you want right. to? Yeah. Oh. Yes, thank you. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless your name for the opportunity you've given us to hear your word. We commit this class unto your hands. You know, we commit the instructor unto your hands. We commit us, the student, unto your hands. Holy Spirit, open our minds to receive, open our ears to hear. That at the end of this class, we'll have every cause to glorify your name. Father, we pray that as we hear your word this morning, this afternoon, this evening, that, Father, we, sh we shall not just be the hearers of your word, but we shall hear your word and also be the doers of your word. Help us as we hear your word. For this I pray to Christ our Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Harrison, for leading us. Uh, Okay, Dinesh is asking if my health is okay. Yes, all fine, Dinesh. Thank you so much. Hope you are doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's great. That's great. Sure. All right. So uh, we will uh, go on with our um, study here about the kingdom of God. We've co covered uh, some very key and important uh, chapters here. Uh, and we have a few more to cover, and this will help us lay a very good foundation for the next uh, chap the next uh, topic that we are going to look at, right? Kingdom builders. So we will take this foundation, and some of the uh, teachings will be repeated in uh, uh, Kingdom Builders. But it's just for us to you know uh, get that Kingdom perspective of things and how to. Um, uh, you know how to do that kingdom life uh, on the earth, and what what are its implications for uh, the time ahead, and, and things like that. So today we will uh, get into the next chapter that we have here, which is a, about kingdom parables. Uh, and kingdom parables, you know, uh, uh, I think at APC there is a series of sermons, very interesting, a uh, lot of uh, revelation there. So you might just wanna go and listen to those uh, sermons uh, here. We will look at the parables, but in a very brief way, uh, just to help us understand, you know, uh, what the kingdom of God is. And we uh, see that Jesus used um, natural things, natural circumstances to explain uh, kingdom reality and kingdom truth. Okay, so uh, it's, it's what a lot of teachers use. You go from the known to the unknown. So uh, that's how Jesus communicated the truth uh, of God's word, uh, and you would find that you know most of these parables, um, the his the people who uh, were his disciples, like they generally got the explanation of these parables. But those who were totally off, like they were not uh, in any way, uh, you know, wanting to know the meaning of of these parables. They kind of they were left out. Okay, so Jesus also said that people will hear, but they may not fully understand. Now we who are in the kingdom of God, now that we are born again, we have the Holy Spirit in us, and we have that. Um, that, that saved spirit in us and we know scriptures say that the spirit the spiritual things uh, are understood by you know spiritual people so we are able to get the uh, meaning of of whatever scriptures have to say and that it comes through by the holy spirit so uh, jesus really wanted people to understand the truth of the kingdom of god so he used some parables um, and uh, you know he he also generally explained the parables because you know, they wanted uh, he wanted people to understand it and he wanted people to believe it. So uh, in uh, Matthew chapter thirteen, Matthew chapter thirteen, you know he talks about how uh, he wanted people to understand the truth of the kingdom of God. So uh, if somebody wants to read that passage, I think it'll be good to just go through that and then we will continue with you know, different parables about the kingdom and uh, what, what truth we can gain out of that. So uh, Matthew 13 is on page 28. So someone can just unmute and uh, please read it. Matthew 13 verses 10 to 17.
Matthew 13. Yes. Verse what? Uh, 10 to 17. Okay, 10 to 17. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it is it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown dull, their ears are heard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For shortly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the king, kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sworn, sown in his heart. Okay. This is he uh, who received to... seed. Yeah. By... Sorry to interrupt uh, Harrison. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you uh, for reading. Uh, I think we'll go to the parable of the sower a little later on. So till 17, um, like you completed 17, right? Verse 17. Yes. Okay. okay. Fine. For, we'll talk for shortly, huh? for as shortly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Harrison, for reading this for us. And uh, here we see how Jesus used parables. Parables are stories from our world uh, that bring out spiritual truth, you know, uh, any, any kind of spiritual truth. In this case, he used parables to, to explain the kingdom of God. So people would relate to it and they um, uh, would be able to grasp it. But in what Jesus shared in this particular passage, it seems like not only his disciples had that grace to understand what was in the parables and the people who, other people who heard it, they could not uh, really get the meaning of it. But today, we know that we have the Holy Spirit in us, who's the spirit of revelation, who's the spirit of understanding, and he can enlighten our hearts to receive the truth because spiritual things are uh, understood, you know, in a spiritual way. So the natural mind cannot understand the spiritual truth. Uh, and, and this is the way in which Jesus communicated about the kingdom of God. And we've been learning about the kingdom of God. So, you know, we want to know um, uh, other dimensions of the kingdom of God. Okay, so there are uh, several parables um, in the Gospels, uh, you know, for us to know. And uh, each one of these parables, and particularly the parables about the kingdom of God, uh, you know, they, they shed more light uh, on the aspects of the kingdom. So we will look at them one by one. Uh, the first one here is the parable of the sower. Okay, so in the parable of the sower, and some of the key um, points that that's, uh, stand out for us. And now we know that it's about a sower going out and he's sowing the seed. And Jesus explains later that the seed is the word of God. Uh, and uh, the seed grows well on good ground, but it doesn't grow well in uh, you know certain other places where there's, when it is thrown on the stone or uh, when there are uh, uh, when uh, there, there are thorns uh, and, and briars kind of choking 
the seed. Uh, we we also um, okay, and uh, some seed that does not. Okay, hold on. There is stony ground, and uh, then there is uh, that which is choked by thorns. Okay, right, and then the good ground. So. Uh, what was Jesus trying to say from this parable? The good part is that he himself went ahead and he explained uh, that parable for us. And he said that the, uh, you know, the, the kingdom of God is such that, um, you know, that there is the word of the kingdom, right? Which is, uh, which is the incorruptible seed of God, which is sown in the hearts of people. Uh, and those who receive it, wholeheartedly, those who receive it with focus, they are the ones who will see the root, you know, for that word develop within them. Uh, and meaning the word is established in those who receive it with focus, receive it with an open heart. Uh, and, you know, uh, they are able to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. But those who um, do not receive the understanding of the word of God. You know, they are not able to uh, bear fruit for God's kingdom. Then we also see that you know, those who go through persecution, trials, tribulations, if they let the difficult experiences uh, you know, weigh, weigh so heavily on them that they're ready to let go of the word, they're ready to let go of the faith, even in that case, the word really does not bear fruit for such people. Uh, and he uh, points out that you know those who are um, taken over by the cares of this world, what are the cares of the world? Our uh, duties, our responsibilities, uh, the things that we, we have to engage in right? as uh, uh, people who are living on the earth. So the cares of this world or the deceitfulness of riches, uh, this is very similar to what we see in 1 John 2, where uh, uh, John writes about, you know, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the things that the world has to offer, the world system has to offer. So any form of distraction, right, uh, uh, any form of giving up on the word of God will, uh, uh, you know, we, we will lose out on the, the growth that we can experience, the spiritual growth that we can experience, uh, you know, whenever we give up on God's word. So that's what Jesus was saying. The kingdom of God uh, is, is like this. The word of the kingdom, we have to ensure that we, we, uh, we uh, protect it, we nurture it, we let what God wants to do take shape in us, take root in us with understanding uh, and then we are in a position to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. So uh, we see the importance of the word, right? the way the word works in the kingdom of God and we must not let the enemy steal that word from us in any way. So that's uh, a point that Jesus wanted to uh, reveal to his listeners so about the word of the kingdom. Uh, and then in another parable, when he talks about the good seeds um, and the tares, okay, now we know this is a parable where Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a man who went and he sowed good seed in his field, but when he slept, there was an enemy who came and he also planted, like he uh, planted weeds, uh, tares in the same feel. Uh, but the, the person decided to let all the crop grow up. So during harvest time, right, during harvest time, when it is collected, you know, at that point, the tares and the good crop are separated. So basically, again, Jesus kind of explains it. And, and he says that the good seed are the people of God in the world today. And the bad seed are the uh, the, the people who don't know God and you know those who are not part of the kingdom. So this is a parable about the sons of the kingdom, okay? the sons of the kingdom. And uh, what we learn from this is that though we are not of the world, we have been sown as good seed in the world. So there is a part that the sons or the daughters of the kingdom have to play. So, uh, that's that's what we learn here and of course you know when you see the progression of things in this parable we note that at the end of the age finally 
when uh, you know that there is a, a sort of the culmination of things and at that point there will be a separation right there will be a separation of those who belong to the kingdom of god and those who do not belong to the kingdom of god so uh, that is some truth that is revealed from this particular parable okay so how does this parable help us you know we uh, might lose heart often thinking that the people of this world don't understand us and uh, you know um, uh, are we even meant to be here struggling living for god uh, and at that point we can remind ourselves jesus did say that the sons of the kingdom have been sown in the world so you know we take heart uh, with the fact that we are here to represent god we are here to serve god continue to do good uh, in the name of, of jesus and yes at, at a certain time when um, things uh, you know the end of the age happens at that time the sons of the kingdom will be separated from the others the tares are uh, those who you know don't believe in christ and the uh, they they are part of the world and and they continue with the things of the world so uh, that is is something that jesus again uh, you know brought to uh, the attention of his listeners so these are some truths about the kingdom so we learned about the word uh, at work uh, in the kingdom and god uses the word right in his kingdom as the seed to accomplish his his uh, purposes and here in the second parable we looked at the fact that we are the sons of the kingdom so we can uh, testify and live for god now another parable that we see this is in matthew 13 uh, it's the parable about the dragnet okay so uh, jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea uh, and gathered some of every kind right and they, then uh, the uh, you know whatever catch The, that the dragnet has everything is taken up but towards the end uh, you separate the good from the bad so you know your good uh, catch you uh, put it aside in good vessels and what is bad is uh, put away so similar to what we talk uh, said in the previous parable the sons of the kingdom and then the sons of the world and the separation that is going to happen towards the end uh, of the age it's the same uh thought it's the same revelation which is coming through the dragnet but what did jesus used to to um um gun you know give them the the understanding he used a dragnet and now we know that during jesus times uh, there were farmers there were fishermen so uh, these analogies were very helpful for people to understand spiritual truth that jesus was trying to share so he's talking about the uh you know the the little kingdom at some point so there is the spiritual kingdom and then eventually it kind of transitions into the little kingdom and the whole you know the uh, judgment the separation those those kind of things that come into play later on so uh, there's a lot that we can say about each of the parables but i'm just giving you you know one or two key uh, truths that are coming up of these parables but you know it will be great for us to go back and just kind of meditate uh, on the parables and get more out of what is being said so here's the next uh, parable for us uh, this is about the value of the kingdom uh, this is in matthew chapter 13 and i i'm uh, going through uh, the apc publication kingdom of god so if you're following me uh, with that publication and front of you i'm on page 41 so the value of the kingdom uh, here um, jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field uh, and then he says uh, which a man found and hid and for joy over it he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field okay and then kind of reiterating the same point he compares the kingdom of heaven uh, is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls and you know that merchant when he found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it so uh, he's letting us know that the kingdom of god is precious the kingdom of god is valuable the kingdom of god is treasure and uh, anything that is very precious to us you know, we have uh, this habit of uh, protecting it 
saving it um, and, and uh, sort of celebrating it right uh, and, and to the extent that we are willing to pay any price to to first of all get it uh, and then to keep it so in the same way when we think about the kingdom of god jesus is reminding us that it is worth paying the price it is worth fighting for it is worth um, you know receiving it and uh, um, striving to keep it and he he compares it right with that that pearl of great price and the treasure which is hidden in a field and what what is the worth of the kingdom of god you know how far can one go to receive the kingdom and he says that uh, these these two individuals that uh, he has uh, uh, you know put in in this par in these parables he's saying they were ready to sell all to have the kingdom of god so you know it just kind of helps us think that the kingdom is precious enough to if you may call it lose your life right he who loses it will gain it that's what jesus said so uh, it's like we we we, are, we should be ready to lay down everything for the sake of the kingdom because the kingdom is that valuable and you know it's a it's a treasure uh, that uh, people can can actually live for okay uh, and pay any price even if it means everything so the kingdom of god being valuable uh, that is what we understand from uh, what we have just read now moving on moving on so uh, you know teachings of the kingdom of god jesus had something to say about the teachings uh, and this is again in matthew chapter 13 so you know we're trying to get a picture of the kingdom there are so many parables you can study all the parables to just get an idea of uh, you know what is the worth of the kingdom what is the value of the kingdom who are the sons of the kingdom right what is it that is sown through the kingdom what we you know that's the word of god now what are the teachings of the kingdom uh, in in one parable jesus said that the uh, kingdom of god uh, the kingdom of heaven uh, is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old okay so uh what was he trying to say so basically he he's saying that the teachings of the kingdom right uh it it's like you know somebody who has um like he has some old things that he's preserving in his in his house and there are some new things and he kind of brings it up okay so he kind of brings it up each time that uh he needs to serve or or uh, uh kind of you know from uh, give to to others so uh the teachings of the kingdom uh, you know it's I, i think this uh, those of us who are in the line of teaching or ministering the word we would understand you know there there is the truth of god's word uh, some some of the some of the truth it never changes right like when we're talking about the cross or when we're talking about salvation uh, when we're talking about uh, the word uh, there are those Uh, principles there is that revelation which we have heard from the beginning and we continue to teach it because it it is always relevant okay uh, and it is it is uh, worth being repeated again and again and again so that's like the old that you bring out if you want to call it old revelation uh, you know that you want to bring out time and again but there's also the fresh and the new like you know the rema word of god um uh, from time to time there there is that fresh revelation uh, that you know god wants us to communicate so then you bring out the new right but the householder of the kingdom of god um, he has both the old and the new but depending on the uh, you know the the timing depending on the people who are being ministered to uh, you choose right you you it's all there everything is there stacked up but relevance based on the relevance you bring an old teaching and then you bring a new teaching uh, right but uh, it's it's all kind of there in the kingdom of god so the revelation of god's word uh, and uh, you know that word being interpreted correctly and in context right in context and uh, right to the situation that word being communicated to the listeners is what 
really builds them up. It's what really positions them for a victorious life as a believer. So the teachings of the kingdom of God uh, is, is um, again, uh, something that Jesus talked about through a parable. Okay. And the next uh, parable here is about uh, stewardship. This is in Luke chapter 19, verses 11 to 27. So over here, basically what he says is, uh, mm, yeah, he gives, he gives uh, uh, that there, there is a noble man who uh, goes away to a far country. Uh, but when he goes, you know, he has servants whom he calls and he asks them to engage in business so he gives them you know uh, it, it, the uh, the currency is minas so uh, you know some currency is given to each of them so one person receives uh, 10 okay and uh, another person receives uh, five and the next person uh, receives one okay so when the when the nobleman comes back his expectation is an increase that these people would have done business they would have invested the, the money and uh, they, they will have more waiting uh, for the nobleman. So it happens in the case of the first two people. So they have an increase, they invest that money and then they say, okay, I gave me 10 and uh, I earned 10 more and the uh, master is very happy with them. And he makes this statement, verse 17, he says, well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over 10 cities. Okay. And then uh, similarly, the second person also is given authority because he does well with what was entrusted to him. But coming to the third person here who was given one mina and uh, he never really invested it. Okay. And he comes up with some excuse for not being a good steward of what was given to him. So uh, the nobleman, the master is very, very angry with this person. Uh, and he says, uh, like, even what he has will be taken away from him. Okay. So uh, then uh, Jesus goes on to kind of, you know, um, okay. Right. So that, that is kind of the parable. So the truth that is coming out of the parable, one is stewardship in the kingdom of God. So that means that um, we have all been entrusted, you know, with grace, with uh, with uh, anointing, with uh, opportunity, right? So, so, so much revelation. We've all been given stewardship of the spiritual uh, things in life. We also have natural resources that uh, have been given to us. Now, what does God expect out of this? So he wants us to invest it in the kingdom. And when we invest it in the kingdom, there will be an increase. And God expects an increase. He, he said to, uh, you know, the nobleman told uh, his servants, right? Do business till I come. So we're all supposed to engage the world uh, in whichever way God has called us to engage it. Now, some of us may be doing it through full-time ministry, but, you know, most of us, right? We're all uh, out there in the world, we are engaging with the world in your regular professional ways. So are we still doing business for the kingdom of God? Yes. So we are being salt and light. No, we are, we are uh, you know, being those representatives of the kingdom. We are being the sons of the kingdom wherever God has positioned us. But what does God expect from each person, no matter where they are positioned, God is expecting an outcome for the kingdom, okay? And when we have a good outcome, or in other words, we've been good stewards of what God has entrusted to us, then God is pleased. And another thing that you notice in this parable is he says, okay, uh, you, you did well, uh, I gave you 10, and now you have another 10, like you have, uh, you, you've become profitable, you earned a profit of 10 more minas, I will entrust you 10 cities. Okay. So in a way, what God is saying is that in the coming kingdom, right? Or, or uh, when the little kingdom happens, the transition to the little kingdom happens, our stewardship here on earth 
will translate into the kind of authority and responsibility we carry in the little kingdom so jesus has put like you know a a, a, a thought here and a point here uh, which helps us know that our stewardship on the earth will determine our stewardship in the coming kingdom okay now there are many scriptures that talk about we will rule and reign right the, the saints are the ones who will have authority the saints are the ones who will judge the world so there is a there is a position of authority for the people of god in the coming kingdom but our place in the coming kingdom or our responsibility in the coming kingdom will be determined by the way we steward it what god gave us right you know what god has given us here at this time uh, in this world so there is a hint about the future uh, in these parables as well so just some parables there and you know some uh, key truth that is coming out um, about the kingdom of god uh, so would you like to add anything more about the kingdom of god because there are other parables as well so if anything comes to your mind you just want to add to what we are discussing the kingdom of god is like any other truth about the kingdom can i share something yeah yes yes uh, so please go ahead okay um i've been paying so much attention to to look 19 and you know you spoke about you know still worship and it's more like you know i'm just looking at you know jesus you know trying to send a message you know to the body of christ and it is very easy for us to look at this uh, parable and see you know what each servant you know has produced what if christ is also making us understand that i have given you gifts to go into the world and bear fruits and when he comes back what are we going to present to him are we going to say oh god you know oh jesus i could not you know the challenges you know that, that i faced you know could not allow me you know do what you know i ought to do so it's more like you know, i'm just meditating on this and i'm like asking myself what is jesus trying to tell me here and these are the few things and that comes into my mind yes it is it is the servant you know we see in the word of god but how do we reflect it in our own christian lives it can be it's a parable that reflects the kingdom of god and what is the kingdom of god is the church in jesus christ so we are his children his servant and he has deposited himself into us to go out and bear fruit so when he comes back are we going to present you know um things you know are we going to present fruits out of you know what he has deposited in us so that's one thing i want to share concerning this bible passage thank you yeah thank you thank you harrison is yes, similar uh, along the same lines of stewarding whatever was given to us well and producing fruit for the kingdom uh you see the emphasis here jesus is helping us understand that it is important fruit is important to him okay any any other things that you take yeah. from what we discussed at yes yes hope you want to say something Yes, Pastor. Yeah, about kingdom, and uh, I just want to share Matthew eighteen twenty one, which is talks about a parable of an unforgiving debtor, comparing the kingdom of God with that kind of uh, parable. And uh, when you were speaking about the kingdom of God, I remember this this chapter and this verse about how the kingdom of God is being compared with an unforgiving debtor. That sometimes we may be the but as we are sons and daughters of Christ we enjoy the kingdom but when we do not see the necessity of forgiving others from our own heart it will not it will make us 
unqualified to the kingdom. So this this parable showed that uh, the debtor go to his king and ask for forgiveness, and the king forgive all his debts. But he had another debt. He had another person who he owed him money, but he didn't forgive him, and they he punished him. And uh, the parable says that uh, the that king take that debt and tell you, I forgive you, but you fail to forgive another person who on you so he throw him away to the prison so it's it's give me an uh, an idea that we who belong to kingdom uh we must be very careful because small things which we do to others affects our our whole life or our whole race with god so forgiving others it is a part of kingdom and it is it is what god compared to the kingdom of god that when we fail to forgive others we do not belong to the kingdom. Even when we Jesus taught uh, his disciples to pray, he taught them that when you pray, pray like this, that Father forgive, uh, when you pray God to forgive your sins, but as you forgive others, so God will forgive you as you forgive others. So kingdom of God also is being compared to the act of forgiveness. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for... Uh, sharing that uh, the importance of forgiveness that comes through uh, what Jesus taught us. Anything else that you can see about the kingdom? I can add yeah, something. Please, please. Um, through the parable of uh, the dragnet and of the wheat and the tears, you can see that it is God himself who allows uh, things to happen in the church. Not in the church, but in, in his kingdom. Because the, for the last, I think last semester, last, last semester, and I think also this, this year, someone raised the question of why uh, there are bad people in the church or why the church is not perfect. So by reading that the parable of... Uh, uh, the dragnet and and this and the wit of wit and the taste we can understand that God allows everyone to come in in his kingdom and it's at the end that he will separate the good one and the bad and it's not up to to us who are in the kingdom to to try and separate but we, we can we can teach the word we can guide people but it's God himself who separates the bad and, and the good Thank you, Ma. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mami. Uh, yeah, so that's, um, uh, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Um, in this parable, though, it's, it's more about those who are in the kingdom and those who are not. So, uh, you know, uh, this parable doesn't say that the sons of the kingdom, within the sons of the kingdom, there's good and bad. And so that's not what is pointed out, but I understand you know, where you're coming from. Um, so in the world, we have the sons of the kingdom, and then we have the people of the world. Uh, and then there's the separation right, uh, between those who belong to God and those who do not belong to God. Uh, and I get the point that you're making, that in the kingdom itself, you're saying that you know some uh, you know uh, are not yet in a place of maturity. Is is that what you're pointing at, Mikey? In the church, because you said in the church. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, Pastor. Because uh, it is God. God who, who who brought the word, right? And the word was sown to ev everyone, and those who. For example, the the, uh, the dragnet was thrown thrown into the sea, and then they pulled it to to the shore to to to, to drag the fish, whatever it, it was, and it brought everything together. So that's where I'm coming from. Where like, mm -hmm. sure. everyone got get brought into the church, and then it's got to separate. Thank you. Okay, so like those who believe and those who don't believe. Okay, right, fine, uh, Maggie. 
that, that's all right. Um, yeah, any any other thoughts about parables and about the kingdom? What else do you know about the kingdom from parables? Uh, Ma'am. Yes, Ms. yes, I'm. please go ahead. Uh, what I felt is uh, like being a, a children of kingdom, we have been interested with so many spiritual gifts and uh, like authority. Unless and uh, we being the children of God, if we don't exercise them and don't accomplish what we have to for the kingdom of God, so that God will be glorified. So if we don't, that's when the kingdom of God will actually will uh, extend it and uh, would be uh, expanded. So that is all. So if we don't grow in that, in if we fail in exercising our gifts, just keep it there. Like God has given us so many gifts. It is our responsibility to explore them, discover them within us and uh, yeah, use them for his glory. That's what I feel. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Anita. So again, more along the lines of stewardship, being fruitful. Even in the parable of the sower, we see the seed is sown, but what is the end result? The outcome, that is uh, fruit. 30, 60, and 104. Okay. Okay, Kennedy, uh, it teaches deep truths of God's kingdom. True. Okay. Have you heard, uh, you know, the parable where um, uh, the kingdom of God, it's like a mustard seed. Uh, when it is sown, it is the smallest, but finally when it grows, you know, it, it is uh, a large tree where it, uh, takes care of people. So uh, that also tells us about how the kingdom is introduced. It can be introduced in a small way, but the kingdom takes over, right? So the pervasiveness of the kingdom is, is uh, something that we can see in parables. The kingdom of God is like that uh, yeast, right? Which works through the, the batch. It, it, it pervades, it permeates quickly. So truths like that uh, also help us know how the kingdom works. Um, any Anything else that uh, comes to your mind from the parables about the kingdom of God, you can add to what we are discussing. Yes, yes, Harrison, please go ahead. Okay, another thing comes to my mind. Um, the kingdom of God is his word. The kingdom of God is his word and if I still read, you know, if I still look at the book of um, Matthew chapter 12 and 37, it says, for by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you'll be condemned. So I want to believe that everything about the kingdom of God revolves around his word. So what comes out of our mouth, you know, will either make us or destroy us. And that's one thing we can also see in the in the in the parable. Everything you know we do is as a result of our actions. What we speak from our mouth, you know, can either make us who we want to be or destroy us. So just mm -hmm. to add, you know, that yeah. the kingdom of God is His word. True, true. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Harrison. So, well, thanks for that because uh, from the parables we understand about the kingdom of God, but there is truth uh, in other places as well that helps us know how the kingdom works. So the kingdom works by the word uh, that, that is so real. So in the kingdom, when you want to see something happen, you got to sow the seed. If you don't sow the seed, you know, Jesus talked about how you sow the seed and then it's morning then it's evening. Eventually there's a blade, right? And then it kind of grows up uh, from there. But you just watch it grow once you have sown it. But who brings the growth? You know, God is the one who brings the growth. So the word of God, which is the incorruptible seed and how it really grows in the kingdom of God, that, that is something we understand from the teachings. So uh, it's different. Like the kingdom dynamics is very different. Uh, and we, we kind of grasp that. Okay, uh, we'll take Christopher's question and then we'll go for a break. Uh, yes, Christopher, you, you want to add something? Uh, 
Uh, Christopher, you, you would need to unmute yourself. Yes, um, I um, just wanted to uh, talk about that, uh, the value of the kingdom where uh, the person finds uh, a hidden treasure. And um, there is a mention of finding it and then, then hiding it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, after that, you know, selling it, um, um, I mean, selling everything else and then buying, buy, and buying it. So I was just trying to understand um, why uh, the person, you know, after he found it, he hid it. I mean, it's, it's kind of a human tendency to, you know, you find the treasure and then you hide it because you don't want anyone else to find it because yeah. you tend to buy it. So yes. I just wanted to understand if the, is there any significance to that or is it just, you know, trying to, trying to ensure that, you know, it is precious and therefore, you know, you're going to, you know, you're going to go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, uh, keep it, you know, or, you know, uh, uh, by, by, by um, keep it and, you know, sell it, uh, sell everything else and, and keep it as, as a precious thing. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to understand is there any significance to that? Yeah, yeah. So in the hiding, uh, thanks for the question, Christopher. In the in the finding the hidden treasure and hiding it again, I believe it has to do with, uh, um, you know, sort of protecting it or not losing the precious thing that you found. Okay. It does not necessarily mean not sharing it because we know elsewhere uh, people are called to to make the kingdom grow and expand the kingdom, extend the kingdom. So we know God wants us to share it with others. So we, the hiding has to do with, you know, not losing it. When you don't want to lose something, you, you keep it safe, right? So it, it's just that. Right. Okay, yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, Oh, it looks like there's another question here. <clears throat> yeah, uh, this is... Okay, uh, Ibrahim, you want to go with your question? Yes, 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 Pastor. I have a question that I, I've been yeah. thinking for some time now. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, Pastor, looking at the uh, Matthew 13, verse 24, which talks about the parable of the wheat. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh in the context of course we understand that um the field is the world but wow. in the concept of weeds weeds are plants that are grown at unwanted places and i was even checking the greek to really be sure what i'm trying to say so um is jesus really referring to the unbelievers or those that are planted in the church even though they are in the church, but they don't support the agenda of God. They are there for their own selfish interest and their own ambition. Is it something like that? That's what I'm trying to look at. Because if you look, you talk about wheat, if you plant a cassava in the midst of rice farm, mm. even though cassava is good, but it is still a wheat. Mm. So um, that's what I'm just thinking. So I decided to ask if I can get more explanations to yeah, that sure. in regards to what Mangi also said. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you said Matthew 24. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 24. Okay, the parable of the Yes. Yeah, so yeah. maybe we can think about that later. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so we're still talking about the parable of the wheat and the tares, isn't it? Yes, mommy. Yes, mommy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So here it's quite clear, uh, Abraham, that. Uh, Jesus is not talking about <clears throat> the the difference in commitment of believers. It, he's not. Because he clearly um, points to his people as the sons of the kingdom. And you know, when we uh, talked about the local church and the spiritual dimension of the local church, we said that everybody who's born again, mm -hmm. that person is a part of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so by default, every believer, everyone who is born again, we are sons of the kingdom. Okay, well, okay, so uh, are there people in the church that truly they don't belong to Christ? Is that something biblical? Okay, yeah, 
So, see, if people are not born again, they don't belong to Christ. Now, is it possible for people to be in the church who are not born again? Very much. There can be some who come, but they never respond to the word of God. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> like when we talk about salvation, we also talk about the fruit of salvation. Like how do you know whether somebody has accepted Christ from their life? You can uh, actually make out whether or not uh, they have accepted Christ. So yes, there can be people who are not born again. Uh, and of course, you know, we uh, in, in the mentoring sessions and uh, in other sessions as well, we have talked about those who are very much part of the kingdom, but uh, due to their own choices at some point they taste the things of the kingdom but they let it go of their own will such people will also not be part of the kingdom because they have walked away from it okay basta all right thank you so much thank you yeah, so much sure yeah. sure thank you okay all right <clears throat> okay, Avni has a question here, but uh, we've uh, overshot time. So let's do this. We'll take a break and we'll come back 10 minutes. So it's 10.54. We'll be back uh, at uh, 11.04. Uh, and then we will take up Avni's question and continue from there. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. See you soon.